At the beginning of the story in 1978, a policeman named Shun Yongduk came with a land broker named Director Kim to a religious cult. Director Kim doesn't believe in the cult at all, but strangely, the local people easily want to join. Some of them were even willing to pay a sum of money and hand over land, hoping to enter heaven. The reason Director Kim brought Yang Duk there was because Director Kim wanted the cult leader named Ryu Makyan to be arrested. Director Kim will share some of the land with Yang Duk as well. Then Yang Duk agreed. Long story short, Yang Duk beat up Makyan and was sure that Makyan had deceived many people. But Makyan denied it. The people who gave him money and land voluntarily and consciously because they wanted a better place to live. Yang Duk didn't believe it because there were residents who testified that Makyan took their property. Making Ma Kyung convinced that Director Kim must have instigated and forced the residents. Young Tuk then showed the signatures of the residents on the letter of giving of all assets. The residents didn't know the purpose of the money. Young Duk wants Ma Kyung to return back everything. Ma Kyung was named as a suspect. Young Duk known from Director Kim that Ma Kyung had previously lived in Vietnam and had killed during the war. Ma Kyung is also married and has one child. He came to Korea because he wanted to repent. Makian began his spiritual journey by eating vegetables and fruit without meat, isolating himself for weeks and spending time reading the Bible. Makian's friendly demeanor and ease of mingling with the community made people believe that there was something special about Makian. From the way Makian looks at sinners, it gives peace and comfort. That's why people immediately believe and gave all their wealth to Makian. Director Kim was even almost fooled, but the director was convinced that everything Makian did was just a devil's plan. But that made Yang Duk even more interested and had a plan. Long short story, Ma Kian, who was already in prison, decided left his room unlocked. Yang Duk's men began to harass Ma Kian and stab knives. But Ma Kian didn't reply and tried to endure the pain. Until the stare from Ma Kian actually made Yang Duk's men no longer dare to stab. Another time, the soles of Ma Kian's feet were been hurt. But Ma Kian still didn't react and tried to behave normally. Ma Kyan's life in prison was further complicated by Yang Duk. Then Yang Duk, who bribed the chief warden, got the latest news. So Yang Duk was upset at his order boy who was supposed to attack Ma Kyan all the way. But the order boy cried in fear and didn't want to be given orders like that anymore. Not only one person, but all the prisoners Yang Duk ordered were convinced that everyone who attacked Ma Kyan was believed to be going to hell. Yang Duk was confused about how Ma Kyan could attract the prisoners' attention and respect. After that, Yang Duk visited Ma Kian. Ma Kian is sure that Director Kim, who put him in prison, will also be punished. But Ma Kian claimed not to have planned anything. Yang Duk is afraid that something will happen to Director Kim. Yang Duk threatened to kill Ma Kian, but Ma Kian suggested that Yang Duk be more concerned with his own safety. This made Yang Duk even more annoyed. Yang Duk thought that Ma Kian would definitely take revenge on him, but Ma Kian didn't answer and asked for something instead. Yang Duk who was originally annoyed at being treated like a subordinate, finally complied. Yang Duk came to Ma Kian's sect and met a woman named Li Yang Jai. As Ma Kian said, Yang Duk asked to lend Li her Bible. After checking the contents inside, Yang Duk found a verse stating that eyes are for eyes, teeth are for teeth, and hands are for hands. Feeling the Bible was cruel enough, Yang Duk then found the names of four men. Previously, Ma Kian told him that there were four people who raped Li and ran out of town. Ma Kian asked Yang Duk to teach the perpetrators a lesson and punish them. Yang Duk complied and began to arrest the four people who raped Li. Yang Duk and his partner beat them severely in front of Li. After that, Yang Duk came to Ma Kian. Ma Kian's attitude, which is still flat and doesn't even want to eat meat, makes Yang Duk feel that there is something. At first, Yang Duk thought Ma Kian was just an imposter. But now Yang Duk is convinced that Ma Kian has a high sense of justice. During his 20 years as a detective, Yang Duk often dealt with prisoners who after being released doing crimes again. So Yang Duk will get Ma Kian out of prison and start collecting criminals so they can repent and not become criminals again. Ma Kian feels that he has something in common with Yang Duk like can make bad people to be good being reborn. Ma Kian agreed to Yang Duk's good intentions. Until time passed. Ma Kian has aged and getting old the villagers come to Ma Kian's place which after checking Ma Kian has died. At another time, a man named Ryu Hei Kuk called his friend who became a prosecutor named Park Min Wook. This Min Wook must be transferred to work because he previously helped Ryu in a case. As a result, Ryu was fired from work and divorced. Ryu asked what exactly he did wrong because Min Wook was sure that Ryu had done nothing wrong. But Min Wook asked Ryu to live like moss that sticks to the rocks and keep quiet. Min Wook asked Ryu not to act up anymore because once Ryu was exposed to a case, Min Wook would immediately arrest him. 
Ryu immediately turned off the phone. Then night fell, Ryu came to a small village. One of the houses lit up and was visited by various residents. Ryu approached and other residents reported that Ma Kyon's son had just arrived. The other residents were confused not thinking that Ma Kyon had children. After that, Yong Duk welcomed Ryu's arrival. Well, this Yong Duk is the village head now. The other residents were still confused about how Ryu could find out if Ma Kyon had died. Ryu then checked Ma Kyon's body. Yong Duk then asked the other villagers to prepare the funeral. Ryu wasn't so sad about his father's death. Instead, Ryu then asked why Ma Kyon died like this. Then Ryu was invited to drink by Yong Duk and three male residents. But Ryu who claimed not to drink made situations more awkward. Yong Duk, who didn't like Ryu's response, was insinuated by other residents. Yang Duk also asked why Ryu didn't drink or didn't want to drink from his hand. That made Ryu no choice to drink. Supposedly, if someone offers a drink, then Ryu should take it. They also asked Ryu to pour drinks for them. Without further ado, they immediately asked for Ryu's return. They were sure Ryu would be home soon, as it would be a waste of time to stay in a small village. Ryu didn't respond to anything. Later, Yang Duk delivered a police officer who was very respectful to him. Ryu stopped the policeman and wanted to know if he would verify Ma Kyan's death. But the policeman said that Ma Kyan's death had already been verified by Yang Duk directly over the phone. After all, the procedure for the death of an old person is very easy. Ryu finds this odd and asks the police to investigate. Until they heard Yang Duk calling the doctor to examine Ma Kyan and make a death certificate. After the call is hung up, Yang Duk asks if Ryu is satisfied now. The next day, the doctor examines Ma Kyan's body, but while asking when Ryu will return to Seoul, making Ryu confused why the doctor asked, but the doctor said he was just curious. The doctor will then write Ma Kyan's death certificate. But Ryu again protested. He wants to know what caused his father's death. A resident became annoyed with Ryu who asked a lot of questions. Other residents are also confused if Ryu wants Ma Kyan to be autopsied. One resident stopped the commotion. Yang Duk then approached and the doctor respected him very much. Yang Duk asks when Ryu last met Ma Kyan because Ryu seems to know something about how Ma Kyan has been living. Ryu's presence made it seem as if the entire village had a grave sin. Then Ryu no longer asked questions. Ma Kyan's body was then buried. However, later a resident named Kim Dok Chun reported to Yang Duk that Ryu asked to be provided with a place to live. Ryu will stay in the village until all of Ma Kyan's belongings are taken away. Yang Duk was worried that Ryu wouldn't want to leave the village. Dok Chun also agreed that they should make Ryu leave the village as soon as possible. So Yang Duk would provide a temporary residence for Ryu. Dok Chun was assigned to take Ryu to the new place, asking if Ryu would leave immediately after taking his father's belongings. Dok Chun reasoned that the villagers weren't very comfortable when city people came to tour the village. Ryu didn't say when he was leaving, but he promised not to make any trouble. Dok Chun became even more annoyed. Then Ryu came to a stall to meet Lee, who was kind enough to welcome him. From now on, Ryu would stay at the inn near the stall. That night, Ryu couldn't connect to the internet. Ryu, who wanted to ask Lee for help, was confused by the return of the resident. Then another resident came calling Lee's name and did something that Ryu seemed to understand. After the citizen left, Dok Chun appeared who was caught by Ryu. Dok Chun didn't want to be accused of anything. Dok Chun makes the excuse of wanting to buy something and leaves in a huff. Soon Lee came out and Ryu peeked at Lee washing her lower body. The next day, Ryu comes to the civil registry service office. After checking further, it turns out that his father actually had a lot of land but later sold it to Yang Duk. After that, Ryu buys various tools but the villager serves him. He forbade Ryu from buying sharp tools on the grounds that they already had the same tools in their warehouse. After Ryu left, the villager called Yang Duk and explained what he had bought. That Ryu came to the internet cafe to investigate the joint ownership of land. Yang Duk contacted the internet cafe operator and asked for all the search history to be copied and sent to him. But Ryu immediately deleted his search history. So Yang Duk asked for the computer to be checked by a technician first so that it could be checked further. Later that night when Rhea returns, he's welcomed by Yang Duk and the three residents for a farewell meal before Rhea leaves. Lee served them, but Ryu said he wasn't leaving yet. Everyone looked disappointed and held back their irritation. They assured him that city people wouldn't be able to live in the village. Dok Chun even insists on leaving immediately, since it's not his hometown. Ryu asked if there was a reason why he couldn't stay there. Yang Duk asked what Ryu was going to do in the village. The other residents showed their dislike even more, but Yang Duk allowed Ryu to stay longer. The village was a safe and quiet place. Ryu would get used to it. The other villagers immediately agreed with Yang Duk's words. They continued eating. After that, Ryu contacted his friend who was a prosecutor, telling him that he felt odd about his father's inheritance. 
Previously, Ryu's father had a lot of land, but all the land was sold to others. His father should have had a lot of money, but his father had no money at all even in his account. Min Wook still felt there was nothing wrong, because someone could use a lot of money to gamble and lose. But Ri remained suspicious, because all the land was transferred to one person, named Yang Duk. Suddenly when he got home, Ryu heard a noise downstairs. A resident named Jun Suk Man, who was below, became panicked afraid of being caught, then he hid. Ri then approached where the sound come from while asking his friend to investigate about Yang Duk. Min Wook of course refused, because he was quite busy and then turned off the phone. Ryu heard another voice much closer. In the limited light, Ryu searched the place further. There was one closet door, but no one was there. The next day, Yang Duk observed all the activities of the residents from his high-rise residence. He also saw Ryu packing his father's things. Soon, Doc Chun approached Ryu to ask for pleasantries and said that Yang Duk as the village chief wanted to meet. But because Ryu looked busy and didn't look him in the eye, Doc Chun was annoyed and left by demonizing Ryu, who had no manners. Then Ryu came to Yang Duk's place. Yang Duk asked Ryu to ask him first about anything he wanted to know about the village. So Ryu asked about the pile of books he found under his father's house. There were many dates and numbers that Ryu didn't understand. Ryu might check it further for fear and anticipation of his father leaving a debt. Before leaving, Yang Duk wanted to know where Ryu would be staying tonight. Ryu said he would stay next to Lee's shop. That night it rained, John and one of the residents drank together at Lee's place. They also invited Ryu to join them for a meal, not knowing that Ryu had just gotten home. Ryu overheard John saying that Ryu was now trying to find his father's legacy, but never came when Makion was alive. They believe Ryu went to the village just because he wanted money. They also says that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Lee hopes Ryu will behave like Makion, but the male residents don't like it because it means disaster. The two male citizens began to mimic what Makion used to say during his life about their sins. Ryu then went and slept at Makion's house. However, someone in a raincoat came with a rope. Ryu, who couldn't sleep well, then felt the presence of other people, especially since Yang Duk had previously asked where Ryu would sleep. The sensor light that Ryu had previously installed lit up. The person who came was Doc Chun, but Doc Chun became scared because apparently Ryu was awake. Doc Chun even asked why Ryu was there because he said Yang Duk tell that Ryu was sleeping at the inn near Li's shop. Ryu doesn't respond, and Doc Chun immediately argues that Yang Duk called him to come move things in front of the house. But Ryu doesn't believe him. And since Doc Chun seems suspicious, Doc Chun leaves and invites Ryu to sleep. Ryu immediately checked under the house and looked for something, until finally an object was stepped on. Reminding him of the previous sound, someone must have come to his place. Ryu then found another door underground, a long wooden hallway connected to somewhere. Ryu become more curious, but the door wouldn't open. The voices of Yang Duk and Jian read reports from local residents about Ryu, including Ryu's activities at the internet cafe earlier. Yang Duk also finally found out that Ryu was divorced, which left Ryu with no reason back to Seoul. Yang Duk also found the name of Ryu's friend, Min Wook, who was a prosecutor, making Ryu panic and decide to go upstairs. But then suddenly Ryu got a cassette tape. Ryu then listened to it, the contents were Yang Duk who made a deal with three residents. A citizen named Sung Q used to own a bar, but then the bar was burned down along with the workers and customers. But instead of being upset, Sung Q was happy and let everything burn to death. Meanwhile, John was a hunter but killed his own friend. Yang Duk, who used to be a policeman, clearly arrested Sung Kyu and Jian while torturing them sadistically, because they had committed a crime. But Jian had a reason if he killed, because his friend owed him money and didn't want to return the money back. Worse, the friend wanted to owe again, accompanied by threats, if Jian didn't want to borrow it. Jian still doesn't feel guilty, because he thinks his friend deserves to die. Yang Duk agreed with what Jian did. After that, Yang Duk made an offer to Sung Kyu and Jian. The special offer was a real rehabilitation center. So Sung Kyu and Jian will get a rehabilitation program outside of prison. Sung Kyu and Jian agreed. In fact, Yang Duk taught Jian how to escape the law by showing a sad expression. Long story short, Sung Kyu and Jian were appointed as Yang Duk's subordinates. Because they had been released from the law, they must obey Yang Duk's orders. Yang Duk will introduce them to Makian, who is referred to as the teacher and the heart of the community. Yang Duk asks Sung Kyu and Jian to treat Makian with respect. Meanwhile, his friend Ryu secretly checks information about Yang Duk. He learned that Yang Duk's assets reached $23 million. This is because when the transactions with Makian was still around $200,000, because the price of land always rose. Until this friend became suspicious of the situation in the village. The scene moves to the village, Ryu has made a plan in the village. Then Ryu went to John's place, which happened to be John was away. Ryu also found another door behind the closet, through the door from his place. 
Meanwhile, Yang Duk was walking around, everyone respected him, including the police. Doc Chun is even happy, because with money they feel like gods. But when he passes Jun's closed shop, Yang Duk gets annoyed. They intend to go to Jun's house. When Ryu went through the document that Jun and Yang Duk had read earlier, Ryu found another paper. Ryu realized that Jun was back. Jun asked Ryu to leave his house. But Ryu argued that he found the hallway from his father's house. Ryu wanted to know the reason why his house was connected to Jun's house. But Jun didn't explain it and made him even more angry. Jun became intent on killing Ryu. Jun getting closer, Ryu became scared and confused. Ryu then really sure that Jun was suspected for his father's death. Ryu must not know how Makian has been living with them. Jun then stabbed Ryu with a screwdriver, making Ryu even more convinced that Jun was the one who killed his father. When Ryu was weak and Jun wanted to kill the sharper tool, Ryu could escape. His escape was continuously followed by Jun, Yang Duk, and Dok Chun, who had just arrived at Jun's house. Sa Jun's goes away. They tried to follow him where Ryu took Jun into the mountains will hold the pain, until the road was ran out. At the edge of the cliff, Ryu stopped and wanted to fight back. Ryu asked why Jun wanted to kill him. But Jun asked Ryu to ask Ma Kian. Yang Duk, who asked Dok Chun to contact Jun, made Jun turn the volume up on his cell phone. Until the ring was heard all the way to Yang Duk. Jun who wanted to attack, Ryu immediately threw a stone in his head. Jun fell down. Ryu panicked himself and heard Yang Duk scream calling Jun, making Ryu leave with bring Jun's axe. Yang Duk and Dok Chun, who tried to contact Jun again, finally heard the sound of his cell phone from below. Jun was dead, making Yang Duk and Dok Chun both panicked and confused. Ryu was also still holding his pain, then covered his wound with soil, hit the axe, and approached Yang Duk while pretending to be confused about what happened. Yang Duk became suspicious of Ryu. Dok Chun frantically explains that Jun died, making Ryu pretend panic too. Yang Duk was confused, why would Jun be on the mountain during the day and end up dead? Would Jun never left his shop and probably didn't come there alone? Ryu, who felt suspected, asked back whether Jun was killed by someone. Ryu then left first on the grounds that the weather was getting colder. Dok Chun found it odd, why would Ryu leave for that reason when someone had just died? Yang Duk then asked for a police officer to be called. Meanwhile, Ryu cleaned up the blood that was splattered in Jun's house. Yang Duk, who was in a hurry, headed to Jun's house. Coincidentally, Ryu managed to escape through the hallway behind the closet. But when he arrived at his house, Ryu could no longer hold the pain. Ryu was helpless until finally someone came. At the prosecutor's office, Min Wook gets more information about the incident of a sec that was killed by someone named Director Kim, and then Director Kim ended his life. The person who was at the crime scene before the official arrived was Yang Duk. Back to Ryu, whose wounds have been treated. He woke up alone and still in pain. Next to him is Ma Kian's teaching Bible with a verse that says an eye for an eye. There is an inscription named Yang Duk. Ryu calls Min Wook again and tells him that he was almost killed by a citizen, but instead the citizen died falling off a cliff. Min Wook admitted that he was also investigating Yang Duk. Min Wook asks Ryu not to do anything dangerous until they find a clue. Meanwhile, Yang Duk and Dok Chun are still sad about Jun's death. The police officer will make Jun's death an accident. Sun Kyu was devastated by Jun's death, because they are close friends and for the last 25 years have always been together. Sun Kyu believes Jun's death has something to do with Ryu. Both Sun Kyu and Jian felt that since Ryu's arrival, it was as if Ma Kian had risen from the dead to haunt them. Sun Kyu won't stay silent, but Yang Duk assures him that it looks like Jun left on her own will. If not, then Yang Duk himself will kill. Apparently, Ryu is there. Yang Duk asks Sun Kyu to be more careful, because Ryu is Ma Kian's son. Yang Duk and Dok Chun then leave, when Ryu paid his last respects to Jun. Sung Kyu immediately opened the conversation. Sung Kyu was sure Ryu was curious about Yang Duk, Dok Chun, Jun, Sung Kyu, and Li. Sung Kyu asked if Sung Kyu told everyone would Ryu leave. Ryu agreed. Sung Kyu then invited Ryu to his house to tell the secret. After that, Sung Kyu left. At the same time, Min Wook was called by his boss. Apparently, the boss had a guest, that is Yang Duk. The boss says if Yang Duk has connections with the top people and if his friend, Ryu, wants back to Seoul, then be nice to Yang Duk. Min Wook then approaches Yang Duk, who seems very friendly, but Min Wook ignores him. Yang Duk immediately explained about Ryu and invited cooperation because Ryu made a big mistake. Yang Duk knew Min Wook's career had been destroyed by Ryu. But Min Wook said that his career was destroyed because of Ryu. But all for the good. If anything happens to Ryu, then Yang Duk is the one who will put him in jail. Min Wook then left. Yang Duk, who wanted to say if Ryu was involved in death, Min Wook didn't care. 
Young Duk and Doc Chun then returned to the village. That night, Ryu came to Sung Kyu's house, but no one was there. So Ryu naturally checked further inside. Suddenly, Sung Kyu reveals himself and then hits Ryu. Sung Kyu in him all the way, but Ryu tries to fight back. Ryu believes Sung Kyu was involved in killing his father. The outside seemed to realize there was a conflict going on. The close one-on-one -on -one battle is won by Sung Kyu. Ryu was tied to a pole, Sung Kyu also told him that Makian wasn't the same victim as Ryu who also killed Jun. Sung Kyu will bring Ryu and his father together. He looks for cutting tools and permission to go to the warehouse for a moment. Sung Kyu even suggested Ryu to run away if he could. Ryu then looked at Lee, but because his mouth was gagged, Ryu doubted that Lee could hear or even see him. After Lee just left, because he felt it not working. Ryu, who could take Sung Kyu's lighter, then tried to burn his body binder, but it didn't work. So Ryu threw the lit match into the grass and the fire began to burn the house. Sung Kyu returned clearly panicked. Lee also finally approached him. Sung Kyu, who wanted to kill Ryu, could thwart Lee. So Sung Kyu entered the house and tried to save his valuable things. Lee also could save Ryu. But inside the house, Sung Kyu was trapped by the growing embers. His body was on fire and when he came out, there was no one to help him. Yang Duk and Dok Chun, who had just back home, panicked at the fire. Sung Kyu is also dead. Yang Duk then turned all the lights in the village on and sees the entire village from his house. Yang Duk was sure Ryu was the mastermind of it all. Until he saw Ryu's car run away. Dok Chun is getting sad because two of his friends are now dead in close proximity. He wants to take Ryu to the hospital. Ryu refuses and instead wants to go home. Lee was a little disappointed because Ryu didn't seem to be trying to find irregularities. But Ryu was no longer strong because the villagers were murderers. Lee felt that Ryu wasn't really trying. Ryu should have fought against them because that's what Makian wanted. There was a reason behind their behavior. Then Lee gets a call from Yan Duk informing him of Sung Kyu's death and asking about Ryu. Lee admits that Ryu is with her and will take him to the hospital because Ryu is seriously injured. But Ryu asked to be dismissed. Lee then took a taxi back to the village. When she gets home and wants to rest, Yang Duk is already sleeping next to her. Lee admits that Ryu kicked her out, so Lee took a taxi home by herself. Lee doesn't know where Ryu now. Yang Duk says that Ryu is still young. Yang Duk knows that Lee likes young man. Yang Duk then slapped Lee many times. If Lee helps Ryu again, then Yang Duk will kill Lee. After that, Yang Duk took Lee to bed. Meanwhile, Ryu then received treatment at the hospital. He then wanted to leave, but was prevented by the police. The policeman who was present at Makian's death ceremony. The police guarded the hospital so that Ryu couldn't go anywhere. The policeman took Ryu to the police station because Ryu was suspected of attacking someone. Ryu clearly denied it, but the police still wanted to find out who was behind John and Sung Kyu's deaths. Ryu who refused would be forcibly taken by the police. Ryu clearly did not accept and would complain to the police for committing illegal actions. Ryu then contacted his lawyer, who was to be Min Wook. Min Wook doesn't understand why a lawyer was called. But Ryu who kept saying that there were policemen who committed illegal acts made Min Wook no choice to follow Ryu's game. Then Min Wook talked to the police claiming to be a lawyer. Min Wook said that the police had no right to take Ryu, even though he was involved in a fight. Min Wook will come to Ryu's place himself. When the call was back to Ryu, Min Wook was a little upset. Min Wook would come and see what problems Ryu actually made. The police then reported to Yan Duk and explained that the lawyer helped Ryu. But mentioning the name of a lawyer that Yang Duk knew if it was Min Wook, the prosecutor. The police were a bit upset and planned to punish the prosecutor who pretended to be a lawyer, but Yang Duk prevented him. Because if everything was revealed, it would be the ones who would suffer the most. The policeman complied. Min Wook then came and no longer posed as a lawyer. He introduced himself as a prosecutor and then took Ryu away. Ryu then tells him that two citizens died and he was involved. Min Wook became curious, so he was taken to the village. The deserted village is the best place to hide a murder case. They then crossed paths with Yang Duk. Min Wook admitted that he came to investigate Jun's death and the suspected culprit was Ryu. Yang Duk so offers help if needed. He still remembers how the investigation procedure works because he used to be a policeman. Min Wook wants to investigate the assets Yang Duk has then leaves. Yang Duk tries to make excuses. Min Wook doesn't care. Lee observed from afar, Ryu left and Min Wook was followed by Dok Chun. Back at home, Ryu shows them the underground passages and all the irregularities in the village. Dok Chun is Yang Duk's obedient subordinate. Soon Dok Chun appeared and confirmed that he was often ordered by Yang Duk. Dok Chun then asks if it's his turn now, since John and Sung Kyu are dead first. Dok Chun is afraid because he doesn't want to die. Min Wook insists that he won't kill anyone. As long as he's there, no one will kill each other. 
Doc Chun gets even more scared and says that if he didn't do anything, if he's guilty, then it's all on orders from Yonduk. Doc Chun's outburst makes Min Wook want to know more. Doc Chun admits that he gave some of his land to the local governor and sent two suitcases of money to the council members secretly. But because one of the councilmen refused, Doc Chun accidentally killed him while forcing him to agree to something. Doc Chun was getting hysterical begging for mercy, he didn't want to die. Apparently Yang Duk was secretly observing. Yang Duk then returned to his house. The next day, Yang Duk called Doc Chun. Yang Duk was disappointed because Doc Chun now seemed to have changed. Doc Chun cried and apologized and Yang Duk let Doc Chun rest. Ryu, who was on his way to his stop, saw police cars and ambulances on the bridge. They found Doc Chun's body dead. Ryu calls his friend reporting Doc Chun's death. Now Ryu is going to Yang Duk, but Min Wook asks Ryu to leave the village immediately. Because Min Wook has a bad feeling. In that village, Yang Duk seems to be able to do anything. Even the deaths of the previous two people didn't seem to matter. Ryu became confused. Actually, what had his father been doing all this time? Ryu wouldn't stay silent anymore. Ryu was ready if he had to die like Ma Kian. After hanging up the call, Ryu left. The police acquaintance Yang Duk observed the conversation. Ryu came to Li's place and there was already Yang Duk eating. Yang Duk had even prepared food for Ryu as well. Ryu immediately asked if Yang Duk killed his father. Yang Duk, who did not respond, made Ryu even more angry. Yang Duk ran out of patience, so he started telling stories. Ma Kian eventually became a teacher for Yang Duk and other residents. They all have to eat vegetables, but Yang Duk, Jian, and Sun Qiu secretly eat beef. They were seen by Doc Chun. They end up breaking Ma Kian's order together. The next day, they began to doubt Ma Kian's teachings. Yang Duk was obviously angry and apologized because the people under him weren't too smart. But Ma Kian didn't mind. Afterward, Yang Duk took his three closest citizens out to have a good time. They laugh at Ma Kian's teachings, even disobeying orders and sinning as they pleased. But Ma Kian caught them. Ma Kian is obviously disappointed, but Yang Duk admits that the three citizens couldn't sleep, so they invited him to have fun. Yang Duk also denied sinning as Ma Kian heard. They were just joking. Yang Duk felt that Ma Kian's teachings also did not match real life. Yang Duk didn't want to be bothered anymore and left. The next day, Ma Kian came to John and said that John had cleaned up all his sins. Ma Kian wanted to know what John would do from now on. But John didn't understand Ma Kian's words. John admitted that he was happy with who he was now and asked Ma Kian not to say anything more about sin in front of him. John actually feels a heavy sinner and will sin again when he sees Ma Kian. At another time, Yang Duk and his three men burned pigs to eat. Meanwhile, Yang Duk is in the loan business where people who borrow money will be given a large interest rate. If he wanted his debt to be paid off, the borrower had to give up his house. The burning of the meat was finally caught by Ma Kian. They fell silent. Ma Kian also finally left. That night, Ma Kian intended to kill Yang Duk because he felt that Yang Duk would always be a sinner if left alive. But apparently, Ma Kian was framed. There was no Yang Duk in the house. Instead, Yang Duk and the others appear from behind. Yang Duk is clearly upset and reveals that the village has been growing not because of Ma Kian, but because of him. Even Ma Kian can live because of Yang Duk too. Yang Duk is even more convinced that Ma Kian is a crazy person who claims to be a messenger of God. Ma Kian asked why Yang Duk didn't get rid of him from the beginning. Yang Duk laughed. All this time he only wanted to use Ma Kian. Yang Duk got all the money, treasure, and luxurious life from Ma Kian because Ma Kian could fool the other people. While Ma Kian talked about divinity to the other citizens, Yang Duk invited murderers, thieves, and swindlers. Yang Duk can't change them for the better, but Yang Duk can give any order he wants. Yang Duk then locked Ma Kian up in that place. Yang Duk's men even said that Ma Kian tried to kill Yang Duk, which means Ma Kian also intends to kill them. Ma Kian is no different from them, both unrepentant sinners. After explaining the story, Li said that Ma Kian wasn't lying. Yang Duk then wanted to leave and invited Ryu to have dinner with him tomorrow, before Ryu left the village. Min Wook and his co-workers do a deeper investigation. The village apparently has a case that has been covered up about the mass death of worshippers. But then Min Wook was contacted by someone. Min Wook then came to Lee and talked together. They also explained that Ryu would come to Yang Duk's house tonight and end it all. Min Wook asked whether Lee has heard about Ryu's father's sect and whether Yang Duk killed all the sect followers. Lee is silent. Meanwhile, Ryu is now preparing a knife. Lee then goes home and doubts if Ryu won't be able to kill Yang Duk. But Ryu has no choice because if Yang Duk isn't killed, then Raya will be. Lee says that the first person to hold the gun will win. Ryu is even more confused about who Lee really is and what Lee wants.
So before, Makian tried to contact Ryu. All this time, Ryu tried to contact Makian, but Makian never responded. Ryu was disappointed with Makian, but Makian also couldn't explain why he couldn't contact him. Ryu said that his mother had died a long time ago. Ryu didn't care about Makian anymore and hung up. Li had time to observe but was called by Yang Duk to serve him. Makian couldn't help Li anymore. That night Yang Duk scared whether Li was on his side or not, but Li didn't answer. So Yang Duk concluded that Li was on Makian's side. Li then says that Makian saved her first while Yang Duk avenged her. Li asks if Makian will be killed. Yang Duk says that his men will do it. Yang Duk also hopes that Li is on his side. If not, Li will be the next target. Li fell silent in fear. After that, Yang Duk started harassing Li. After Yang Duk, the other men took turns doing bad things to Li. After hearing the story, Ryu apologized to Li. Now Li is on Ryu's side. They must take revenge on Yang Duk as Makian requested before his death. That night, the police and prosecutors finally come to the village to arrest Yang Duk. But the superiors are upset because many of their officials know who Yang Duk is. Min Wook doesn't care. At the same time, Ryu and Li are at Yang Duk's place. When Yang Duk prepares food, Ryu said that Jian died because of him. Sung Kyu also died while trying to kill him. But Yang Duk continued to ignore him. Ryu then pulled out a knife and asked why Yang Duk's men were trying to kill him. Ryu doesn't know what he did wrong, but Yang Duk remains unafraid and shows him the gun. The prosecutors and police finally reached the village, they split up and prepared. Yang Duk then told Li to put away the knife on the table. Ryu tried to take it, but Yang Duk threatened him even more. Yang Duk denied killing Makian, but Ryu didn't believe him. The prosecutor also came to arrest Yang Duk because he was suspected of killing Dok Chun. But Yang Duk refused to be arrested, and an argument ensued. Yang Duk wants to be shown proof that he killed, making Min Wook mobilize other colleagues to find evidence that Yang Duk was involved in committing a crime. When told to investigate the documents, Yang Duk was upset. He also knows that Lee betrayed him by telling secrets to the prosecutor. But at this time, the local police instead doused the documents with oil and set them on fire. As a result, the place exploded with a policeman. Lee also said that the burned policeman was Yang Duk's son. The policeman was tortured to death, but Yang Duk laughed. Ryu, who was annoyed, was pointed at a gun. Ryu asked to be told about Makian first. Yang Duk said that Makian was the beginning and end of the village. Makian is the founder of the cult in the village. So long ago, Yang Duk rushed to the place of worship and was shocked that everyone was dead, including Director Kim. But while still conscious and dying, Director Kim said that the culprit was Makian. But Lee says that Yang Duk is lying because the real story is that Makian was a witness and it was Yang Duk who killed everyone there. Yang Duk denies it and ensures that Lee was young at the time, so she must have forgotten. Makian, who knew that all of his congregation were killed, panicked. He was sure it was Yang Duk. Feeling unsafe, Makian wanted to go with Lee. Lee was confused, but Makian didn't explain anything and said that the other congregations were praying. On the way, they met Yang Duk and brought them back. Yang Duk was sure that Makian was from the place of worship, but Makian denied it. Lee couldn't understand why Makian was lying, and Yang Duk said that there was a gift at the house of worship because Yang Duk felt lucky to meet someone like Makian. Lee also saw blood behind Yang Duk's ear. Lee, who panicked, wanted to say something, but Yang Duk still denied the story. Ryu was also confused why his father hid the mass death. Yang Duk said it was because Makian was the culprit. But Lee denied Yang Duk's reason for not telling the incident because, according to Makian, the death was based on the court. Makian always feels guilty when he sees Yang Duk. Min Wook wanted to take Yang Duk to the office, but Yang Duk didn't want to go if there was no proof of his guilt. Lee also mentioned other evidence. Makian had mentioned this evidence. Yang Duk threatens Lee if she says it, but Lee still explains about the documents in the warehouse. Min Wook so ordered his co-workers, they immediately rushed to search until finally found documents of the residents who signed in the letter of giving of all property and had something to do with Ryu's father's sect. Yang Duk couldn't argue anymore. Yang Duk was ready to face everything in the eyes of the law because he felt he knew almost all state officials. Yang Duk hands over his gun and Min Wook gives five minutes for Yang Duk to get ready for the office. Ryu is still confused about his father's death. Lee says that Makian died because of old age. No one killed Makian. Ryu is even more confused about why his father wanted him to come there. Lee says it might bring justice that Makian couldn't do. Left alone, Yang Duk yells claiming to be an ex-cop and that no one can bring him down. Yang Duk, who has another gun, then ends his own life. As time passed, Min Wook was finally reassigned to Seoul. Min Wook also thanked Ryu. After that, Ryu arrived at the village to visit his father's grave. 
The state of the village has changed a lot, Meng Yum houses, new residents, and Ryu saw Lee and Yang Duk's house used to be. Lee designed the village's development, and that figure reminded Ryu of the first time he got a call from a woman informing him of Ma Qian's death. The woman sounded like Lee. She said that Ma Qian had a last request for Ryu to come back to the village, and now Lee is replacing Yang Duk as village chief, leaving Ryu speechless for a long time. Then he realized that all of this was apparently Lee's plan. After that, the series ended.